Genghis Khan is arguably the greatest and most formidable conqueror in human history. In his time as the first Great Khan of the Mongol Empire from AD 1206 until his death in 1227. His conquests would amount to over 3 billion people in 30 countries on a present day map of the world. In two and a half decades, the Mongols conquered more territory than the Romans did in four centuries. The size of the Mongol Empire Genghis Khan founded was truly astonishing. At its apex, the Mongol Empire stretched from Hungary to Vietnam, India to Siberia. One of the central reasons why the Mongols managed to rapidly explode in size was through the effective use of psychological warfare. Genghis Khan was a master of propaganda and psychological manipulation and was seemingly well versed in the teachings of the ancient Chinese general and strategist Sun Tzu who famously wrote that all warfare is based on deception. Essentially, psychological warfare is the use of various forms of communication aimed at reducing an enemy's will to fight. A psychological operation, or PSYOP, is an operation that uses specific information in order to influence the perspective, motivation and behaviour of a target population in a manner advantageous to your own interests. From the Spartans wearing blood red cloaks in order to instil fear in enemy troops who are observing them from a distance, to the British military airdropping leaflets in German positions during World War I in an attempt to persuade German forces to surrender, History is filled with examples of PSYOPs. A core way in which Genghis Khan used psychological manipulation was by using various techniques to exaggerate the size, power and brutality of the Mongol army in the minds of groups targeted for conquest. Genghis Khan understood perfectly well how terror could be used to instill fear in peoples who had not even encountered the Mongols in the flesh yet. On a simple level, Mongol warriors were ordered to tie tree branches to the tails of their horses so that more dust and sand would flick up into the air when riding, meaning that enemies observing a Mongol army from a distance would think that the army was far larger than it actually was in reality. On a more sophisticated level, Genghis Khan created a whirlpool of propaganda before attacking a city and a psychological terror campaign that often weakened the resolve of an enemy to fight against a superhuman Mongol army. Genghis Khan would send a delegation of spies and agents to a target city prior to invasion. These agents would then spread exaggerated rumours and propaganda in the target population about the size and the brutality of the Mongol warriors. It appears that Genghis Khan was also more than happy to let scribes and scholars who were not agents of the Mongols to spread these inflated tales, as the ruler allowed letters containing these stories to spread freely. Genghis Khan also used other methods of manipulation. Before sacking a walled city, it was common for the Mongols to completely destroy and cause utter chaos in the surrounding area, then to completely vanish for a time, to finally reappear just as the population of the city believed that they were safe from a Mongol siege. Another tactic used by Genghis Khan was to send a terrifying message to citizens of a city prior to war, offering mercy to those who surrendered, yet complete annihilation to anyone who resisted, including killing the wives and children of those who opposed them. In addition to these psyops, Genghis Khan also employed the strategy of divide and conquer in many campaigns, as he always looked for opportunities to undermine the authority of the rulers in the target system, as well as sow dissension amongst its people. This tactic was used very effectively against the Zhuzhin or Jin dynasty, who ruled a region which correlates approximately to the northeastern region of present-day China. During this campaign, Genghis Khan's first act was to divide the Khitan people from their Jin rulers who had overthrown the Khitan royal family a century previously to take control of the region. The Mongol forces entered the Jin region portraying themselves as an emancipating force 
aimed at restoring the Keaton royal family to power, with this calculated move resulting in many Keaton people joining forces with the Mongols, with the linguistic similarities between the two groups aiding this process. The Mongols also engaged in a propaganda campaign to try to convince the Chinese subjects that the rulers of the Jin dynasty would be unable to protect them against a Mongol invasion, in an attempt to sow dissension between the Chinese rulers and their people. Starting in 1211, the Mongols gradually took more and more of Jin territory until completely destroying the dynasty in 1234.